Hey everyone, welcome back. Shark here with one of our most exciting 1v1 casts yet. This one on the map Famineville Approach. In one quarter, we have Reekly, the number 14 ranked USF player. He's trying out a truly innovative off meta build, and he'll need it if he's going to win, considering he's up against arguably the best Co3 player in the world, Bergy, who's playing as the DAC. This game features extremely high level play, as you'd expect, and is a back and forth match to the very end. Help me break down the action is my good friend Sarge from the Sarge GG YouTube channel and Discord. As always, we'll do links and timestamps in the description below. And with that, we'll roll into the video. Welcome, everyone. We have an awesome match for you today. We've got Farage starting on the west side of the map or the bottom of the screen right now. And we've got Reekly uh, starting on the east side, uh, the, the top of the screen. Neither of these players really need any introduction, but I will introduce my co caster for tonight, the man, the myth, the legend. Chris, Sarge, Adams. Chris, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Happy to cast this game. I love Famineville. Big fan of Fair G and uh, get the show on the road. Yeah, and I, you know, the viewers will probably already notice I'm starting really focused on the DAC side of things, and that's because if you're going to learn from anyone, who better to learn from than the guy who's won every Co3 tournament so far? So really excited to see how Fair G plays this. Um, interestingly enough, Reekly has already gone full armored battle group and he's got three assault engineers queued up. Meanwhile, Farage hasn't picked the uh, battle group yet. He's got a crowd shooting out, capping the north side of the map. And he just got his first squad of Panzer Grenadiers ears out, and so he's kind of spreading out right now. Um, what do you think the strategy is with the assault engineers for, for Reekly? Very interesting to be opening this way against Dak. Obviously, he's going to have a lot of manpower fielded pretty quickly here at the minute and a half mark. He's already got three engineers. So he's got four units to three to start. He's going to have a lot of good uh, presence on this bottom side of the map. So he'll be able to press that pretty hard. But he's going to have to keep his units relatively close, I feel, because he's not going to be able to take too many one-on-one uh, -on -one engagements against those P-Grants as they start to, to field. And yeah, he's got a force squad out. Now, one thing I think is interesting, at least with the sappers, their SMGs do good penetration against light vehicles at range. And so I wonder if he's relying on the same uh, for the assault engineers to push off the crowd shoots in. Doesn't seem to be working. Uh, they're backing up, but he might be setting up some sort of ambush here. Yeah, he's going to have to be really careful. Farage's micro is very strong. He's keeping his distance. He's trying to bleed that squad down as much as he can. Force it back. Of course, he's got the repairs from those P-Grants as well, so he can maintain this frontal pressure as long as he needs. And yeah, and the first thing I'm noticing is Farage's done a good job playing in lanes here. Right, so he's got this squad of Panzer Grenadiers uh, teamed up with the crowd shoots him. Uh, and then he's got his other, his Pioneers and other Panzer Grenadiers advancing online. Uh, and so it looks like he'll be able to take decent fights, and he is staying at range like you pointed out. Yeah, so... He Fergie's being smart, he's playing relatively defensive, like you said, controlling these lanes. And I, I feel Reekly has to put on the pressure now because his units are not going to scale as well. The longer the time goes, I feel the longer, or the, the more quickly Fergie will gain an advantage. Now, Reekly is pressuring Fergie's fuel, and it looks like he will decap it here. So that's a potential resource swing for the early game. Yep, there's the decap. Interesting. Now, Farage starting to switch north towards the top side of the map, which is honestly really smart. He, he giving oh, up the bottom no. side. And he oh, lures, wow. Reekly lures the motorcycle into a mine on the fuel, and there goes the crowd shoots then. Nice. Mines win games, man. Oh, yeah. And the Panzer Grenadiers here in the center are definitely going to win against these scouts. But Reekly is going to cap up the south side of the map here. Uh, he's using the Pioneers to get a cutoff, so smart cap order on Farage's part. And then Reekly's going to pressure the other fuel on the north side of the map. Really interesting. I feel like the second that crowd shooting went down is, is the moment that Reekly's gaining a big swing of uh, tempo here to control the map. So you see a, a squad of Assault Grenadiers out, so really infantry heavy build for DAC. Just been more viable lately. And now the quad mount... Uh, uh, half track for Reekly out. Um, so interesting counterplay to all the infantry. That's going to do a fair amount of damage to these these squads that are not really prepared to deal with, uh, you know, a, 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 let's say a moderately light vehicle, medium light vehicle. I don't know how to describe it compared to a crowd shooting. I guess if a crowd shoots an ultra light, 
And this just is a light vehicle here, yeah? Yeah, and we got the light support company, of course. He's pumping out those Panzer Jaegers to try and counter, but it's not really going to be a, a, a very strong counter. I think Reekly is going to have a good, good control of this early to mid game. Although, you wouldn't know it looking at the map. It is a pretty even 50-50 split right now. Uh, now he yeah. is contesting uh, Reekly's northern fuel. Uh, and then Reekly counter punches immediately with assault engineers on the southern field. So, yeah, well an played. another mine on a fuel point. So Reekly making good use of early mines and having his staffers spread out, or his assault engineers. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's got a lot of utility with them, laying mines, also able to repair that M16 and any other vehicles that are going to be fielded. Uh, but looks like we have a potentially a flak coming out from the fire support elements. I'm not sure what he's going to be going for. From fa for Faraging? I yeah. would assume he's going for the flak, right? To counter the M16? It, and to counter the assault engineer uh, spread here. Yeah. You know, and from the KD, you would never know that Reekly's playing with these more squishy infantry. The flak track not afraid of the Panzer Pioneers. I mean, but this is where you see, this is the really, the high level play that you look for is uh, multiple engagements across the map and good micro to keep capping pressure on even when uh, facing you know units that are, are hard counters that are going to win. And now a sniper out for Reekly versus an ISG and a half track uh, for Faraji. So interesting on the ISG so part. Yeah, so interesting. This is, this is so, not something that I've seen before. Um, pretty high level play. And I, I would say that the sniper is a smart call because he could bleed those pgrens. Um, and he can bleed the assault grens, which are very expensive to reinforce, while keeping that frontal pressure with the assault engineers. So, let's see how they they perform. Yeah, and the assault grenadiers, even with their recent nerf, should do just fine against the assault engineers. And then trying to use the camouflage on the Panzer Jaegers really does whittle down that half track, but not enough to kill it, and the Panzer Jaegers are forced to back off. So bazooka squad out now, so Reekly is prepared for light vehicles uh, from Faraji, but they haven't shown up yet. Yeah, I think he was expecting uh, a flak or e maybe even an 8-rad, but nothing of this sort. So there's a sniper, and he can immediately take a shot as soon as he leaves the weapon support center. Yeah, Panzer and Adirs are forced off before they bleed too much. I find the LEIG such an interesting choice because there's not a lot of static weaponry out of Reekly. We, we haven't seen any MGs or, um, you know, any pack house. There's nothing of the sort. So it's it's an interesting choice. Yeah. And likewise with the sniper, um, especially with the DAX play with mobile vehicles, that sniper is at risk for sure. Uh, Panzer Pioneer is clearing some of the mines that Reekly has put down. Reekly is starting to take uh, definitive map control here. These assault grenadiers are not the right unit to counter the sniper, so they're going to back off. In the center, Panzer Jaegers. Oh, there's the snare, and that half track goes nice. down to Panzer Jaegers. So, Very nice pickup. What do you think of the new snare mechanic? Back to the Code 2 style. I like it personally. Uh, I think it's strong. I, I think it's, it's consistent, right? It allows for a very good... Uh, Proactive and reactive play, counterplay from both players. I'm, I'm in favor of it overall. I, I agree that it is more consistent. I think it is a bigger nerf to vehicle play than maybe it was apparent at first. Um, it's yeah. made a lot of general in, generalist infantry units much more viable. Uh, the biggest one is the Wehrmacht Grenadier, which is seeing way more play in this patch uh, than previously. Especially yeah. their Panzer Faust has the extended range too. Yeah, I would say the patch was more focused on infantry play and anti-tank gun play and, and really trying to slow down the, the power of vehicles and light vehicles in Code 3 because they do hit the game so much faster than Code 2. Um, so overall, I, I do like the change. Yeah, I know it, it did away with a lot of the frustrations people had with snares starting and then canceling and starting and then canceling. Um, yeah. I think it does take away a little bit the ability to maneuver light vehicles out of range. But as of right now, balance feels like it's in a decent spot. So I, I'm not inclined to complain about it too much. <laughs> yeah. 
Lance Jaegers are not going to do well in this fight against the Assault Engineers, and they're going to try to drag the Assault Engineers over towards the flak track. While Bazooka Squad set up hunting for that flak vehicle as well. Yeah, some great multitasking here by Reekly. He's pushing up that sniper, starting to bleed those Panzer Grenadiers as he's trying to pick off that flak track, as you said. And Perigee's found himself kind of backed up into a corner here as Reekly's taking even the top side fuel as well. And, and the more we watch this, the more I, I like the sniper against Dak. All of their upgrades require manpower. And they're normally a little bit lighter on manpower than the other factions. Their infantry are, per, are effective but expensive. And so it really makes sense. Yeah, it's smart. I, I do like it as well. I wonder if the LEIG was a little too slow of a play from Perigee. Um, but he is starting to pick up some momentum with this flak. He doesn't make many mistakes. Right? And yeah. uh, he's still winning in terms of KD, 19 to 11. He can't really fault his uh, his technique here. No, no, he's, he's playing it well. He's being patient. Starting to reclaim the bottom and the top fuel, which is very important. The Reekly already has a considerable VP advantage. 49 to 236, and he's getting his tank depot out now. Well, Farage can't be far off from his own. Yeah, it's yeah, only like, what, 100, and, 100 fuel now for DAC uh, Panzer Army Company? Yeah, 100 fuel. So he's close. Um, but Farage, he's very, very... Uh, macro oriented player who will play for the long game i mean this guy does not quit and he he's very methodical and really takes his time so you know he's got a plan for for the late game as well here and pretty widespread engagements across the center of the map here you've got a sniper whittling down models on the north side and then in the center you've got the flak track dealing with bazooka squads the second bazooka squad out now for replay and he's, he is really prepared to deal with vehicles, and he's already unlocked the EZ-8 build from the tank depot. So it looks like we're going to see EZ-8s here. Interesting. Black Track can support these Panzer Grenadiers, but he's got to be careful. He's about half health, and those Bazooka squads will still get a couple of shot, shots off even when suppressed. Yeah, I'm really impressed with Reekly's ability to, to control this. If you look at the, at, at the mini map, he's got this line across the map and he's he's able to do extremely well with these uh, bazooka squads and assault engineers, which I I was not assuming to fare up well against the Pegrins, but pretty impressive overall. It It's so micro intensive, right? That's a lot of squads to manage constantly, especially with a sniper as well. But if you have yeah. the the talent to do it it looks like it'll pay off not something i could pull off for sure <laughs> and now we got an m18 coming up just in as a pack 38 is fielded by farage so he'll be prepared for that oh he's got to get that flak track out of here yeah, interesting that he went with the hellcat first but I i'm guess surprised by that as well he must be worried about a fast vehicle from farage that's the only thing i can think I would have really liked to see a bulldozer or a, even a Sherman over this Hellcat, to be honest. We have been cut off. Yeah, both players still very infantry heavy. And then now you got two half tracks out for Farage. And so that Hellcat's going to spend a lot of time uh, waiting for an opportunity to strike the flak track right now. Meanwhile, Farage is conserving his fuel as much as he can. This is really currently, go ahead. Currently just putting down that Panzer command, so interesting to see what he goes with. By the time it goes down, he'll have enough for a P3 for sure. Oh, the Hellcat runs into an AT gun. It's gonna eat at least one round here. Look them back away. And Rinkley has a machine gun out now, which is a also a really solid counter to this infantry heavy build from Farage. Although yeah, the 1919 kind of... is really unimpressive in terms of suppression. 
<laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, he's got to be careful of that LEIG. Constantly repositioning as he did. Very good micro, very good multitasking. Oh. Meanwhile, on the bottom, he's pushing off that flak for lane. Yeah, they, this is Bazooka Squad's almost caught it out. Ooh. Ooh. And it just barely you know. gets away. Super close call. Pack trips away at the Hellcat. And he's assaulting uh, Grenadiers. Going to do work against the Engineers. But not enough to wipe. Man, I tell you yeah. what, Reekly's done a phenomenal job maintaining pressure. Yeah, it's hard to even follow, man. Meanwhile, he's he was up in the north engaging as well. Pretty impressive. Yeah, lots of concurrent engagements, and he's spread out across the map and constantly making Farage fight just to maintain his own fuel control. Sniper on retreat. MG in a little bit of trouble. The LAG is starting to hammer it. This is Salt Grenadier is pushing in. And it, it doesn't even bother to fully set up. It's just going to retreat. Salt Grenadiers are chased, but probably don't have the DPS to finish it before they can range. Oh, I, I take that back. They almost get the kill on the machine gun. Yeah. Just like that, Farage has reclaimed the center and the top side of the map. The right hand side. Very impressive. He's got some good counterplay and some good momentum now with. Uh, it's tier three now online. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hellcat still waiting for a vehicle to shoot at. Instead, it just keeps to <laughs> keep absorbing <laughs> pack rounds. Yeah. Both players floating a considerable amount of manpower, which is not something you'd expect with the amount of infantry on the field. Something to be said for the ability to pick and choose your engagements. But he's even using the ISG to cap the fuel. I'm really impressed with Farage's feel for where the enemy can hit him and where he can't. And his ability to yeah. move around and maintain pressure. That's a good point, yeah. As, as we see now, Reekly's pushing heavy up at the top. He knows he's safe at the bottom. And now he's starting to consolidate in the center around that flak for Link. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest, I don't play with Assault Engineers enough to know their reinforced cost. I know it's more than Engineers, but having four squads in them and routinely losing engagements doesn't seem to be enough to really whittle down Reekly's yeah. manpower. It's a reinforcement cost of 23, so that's not, not bad too at all. Bad. No, not bad. And Sniper doing great work turning some of these engagements. Yeah, double vet. He's, he's been on top of his micro all game, really bleeding uh, Farage as much as he can. Now we got that, that Sherman online. Yep. The easy eight. And Farage's managed to stabilize the VP balance just a little bit, but I don't know if he has enough AT on the field to deal with this easy eight. Oh, the first shot takes away half of the pack's health. Yeah. Oh, this pack is in trouble. That's really the power of the EZ-8. It's able to push against these AT guns and also force that flak thing off. <laughs> now both are using the sight blocker and attacking ground through the, the tree there. Assault engineers are going to clear this AT gun. And now, Farage is in trouble. His hard AT is gone. He's got his Panzer Jaegers, but he uses them to recruit the pack. Reekly's overextending just a little bit here. He's starting to push into Farage's base. Farage gets a second AT gun out. As it continues oh, wow. to lose models to the EZ-8. Well done, Reekly. Very good play. Yeah, good push. And, and throughout all that, though, Farage capping up on both flanks of the map. So, unfortunate engagement for him, but he doesn't lose a whole lot. He re is able to... Well, he loses the AT gun. It's destroyed. Uh, and he's doing okay as far as capping is concerned. So, as, as yeah. dire as that looked, he prevented himself from really falling behind. That's the key. You know, tactically retreating, not taking losses, repositioning. Both players are even supply. We have 83 for Reekly, 79 to Farage. And uh, looks like Farage is starting to push back out on the map. We've got kind of a reset here. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the multiple assault engineer squads, that uh, EZA is going to be back up full strength very soon. 
Oh, Bergy's doing the armored uh, reserves upgrade, so we may see a tiger out here in relatively short order. Well, the new tiger. What do you think about the newest uh, changes to the tiger, especially for Dak? I think it, it definitely feels like a tiger. It is frustrating yeah. how often you feel them now, though. Uh, I, you see them in pretty much every game with the DAC, and so uh, it doesn't feel as special in terms of the rarity, but it does feel special in its performance. I agree. This uh, Easy 8 is going to knock out this ISG here. Meanwhile, in the center, infantry pushing back on the pack and the flak track. And Reekly once again has Fergie on the back foot. Assault. Grenadier is not really going to be able to do a whole lot to this EZ8. Yeah, They'll be able to. Yeah, they're going to knock out this ISG here. And then meanwhile, in the center, uh, Fergie is going to survive and maintain control of the center. But, uh, you know, Reekly is now capping up the, uh, the southern flank with a machine gun. Oh. Yeah, big play. That was a very nice play, I think, by Riki overall. I think he's going to have a lot more pushing power now with that with that LEIG or ISG out of the game. Um, and he really just needs to leverage this armor as much as he can. Yeah. Again, no one really making progress on VPs with a, an even balance at the moment. Um, but Riki definitely with the fuel advantage. And in about a minute, he'll have enough to get a second easy 8 out. Another AT gun out for Farage. Smart call. Yeah, he needs it at this point. AT guns definitely work better in pairs. Increases the chance you're going to catch the enemy out of position. Actually kill a vehicle. Yeah, and we have a very deep uh, support line here for Farage. He's got strength and depth here as he's starting to consolidate in the center. Reekby trying to look for... Uh, position to attack but looks like he's gonna be pushing his armor down into the bottom now bottom left and that makes sense he's had success on that flank and if he can get around these at guns he'll be able to do a lot of damage Farage smartly has his at guns spread apart enough that they can cover each other and so you can't dodge both arcs at the same time as you can see just as Reekly showed his armor Farage quickly turns his at guns he's starting to Bring up these 250 half tracks just to gain sight for his AT guns. Very, very high level play. Yeah. Plus they have the healing, which is a, a nice bonus when you have these AT guns getting whittled down. The second easy eight Point. coming out weekly now. And you gotta wonder what what's Farage's play? Is it the tiger? He's already at 160 fuel. So 60 more it must be. a couple minutes of manpower. It must be, but how well is the tiger gonna fare against two easy eights and a Hellcat? Oh, oh man. Oh, Firestorm called in in the center. One AT gun cleared. These easy is just driving circles. Second AT gun cleared. They're going to destroy it. The Firestorm not going to have a big effect. One easy eight gets snared. A half track goes down. And this is the push. Reefly's trying to end the game right now. He doesn't want the Tiger to come out. Major consolidation in center for Reekly. He hit a really, really successful push. Fergie's backed up into his base. And with those two AT guns knocked out, I feel like a Tiger is going to be even more vulnerable. Yeah. And Reekly's made, uh, maintained such good pressure on the fuel. We're still solid two minutes away for Fergie if he doesn't spend anything else from getting that Tiger out. Now he's back down on VPs. Um, he's still got a little bit of time to consolidate, but... Reekly just not making mistakes here. He's totally evened up the KD that was tilted in Farage's favor earlier. Um, they're pretty impressive play here. Good control of the game. And um, yeah, I got to hand it to Reekly. He's playing this really well. It's really interesting, man. I was not expecting this from, uh, from the USF player, this kind of build, but I'm learning on the fly here. Yeah, four assault engineers. That's wild. Into weapon support center sniper, not a, not a rifle squad or a ranger squad to be found. And now both Look of these the supplies. 95, yeah, he's pop capped. Yeah. He's easy eights on the advance again. And Farage forced to retreat his infantry to the rear. One mine gonna uh, snare an easy eight, but they're just gonna be able to drive away. 
Uh, okay, so Farage goes for the double uh, stronger shoots. Which interesting he, play. If he can keep them in the rear, he'll be able to whittle away, and they're a lot harder to destroy than the AT guns. Meanwhile, these Panzer Grenadiers and Flak Track are stuck. And uh, I think this is probably the end for the Flak Track here. I don't see it getting away from the two EC8s and a, a Hellcat. And a Bazooka yeah. Squad. He's going to inevitably use those smoke canisters at the last minute here. We'll see if he can get out, but it's going to be difficult. Meanwhile, he's pushing in the center with his infantry, trying to regain some control and link up with that flak for Link. Wow. If he gets this flak track away, like, talk about mind blown driving right into the enemy's base and then coming back. And he's finally, he's chosen the battlefield uh, espionage battle group and he's got his uh, disruption beacon set up in the center here. Very, very nice play by Farage. With less army supply, he's able to maneuver himself into a pretty good position, forcing Reekly back into his base. He loses a half track. I, I still can't believe he got the flag track out of it. That's wild. Stug's ineffective and now flanked by the EZ8. And they try to rotate to take some shots with the easy eight making good use of the sight blockers and now here comes the additional flank from Reekly. and suddenly Farage's found himself in a pocket yeah pressed on all corners here Panzer taking, Jaeger's Reekly is taking advantage yeah, yeah he's taking major advantage of these hedgerows forcing back the Panzer Jaegers uh, the first dog looks like it's about to go down the Hellcat's going to give chase, but he whiffs the shot. The second Stug, though, now in real trouble. One easy 8 snared briefly. Oh, uh, the Stug in the center definitely going down at this point. Good use of the Firestorm to force off the infantry. Alright, yeah. One Stug goes down, one escapes uh, to get repaired in base. Man, I feel like Farage could not afford to lose any anti-tank there. He's already lost two AT guns. One Stug is down. I feel like this is the major issue for him right now. He needs stronger anti-tank. He's going for that flak, but I don't know if that's going to be enough against this mass amount of uh, infantry and combined arms armor. Yeah. He's going to have to position it perfectly. The good news is Reekly doesn't have any significant artillery. So he's at least protected in that context. He's going to challenge and he's going to win back this VP on the south side of the map. But here comes Reekly's armor again, right through the middle. And and the Flak 36 is not going to be set up before this armor advances and, and forces off all this capping power from the south side of the map. Major supply advantage for Reekly, so he can be in two places at once here. He's choosing to fight down in this bottom right hand pocket where the Flak is setting up. Oh, Flak 36 doing some good damage to the EZ-8. Oh, but it's going to get away with just a sliver of health. Wow. Uh, this... Oh, he tries an attack ground, but he misses just barely. That was so close. Yeah. So, Farage able to turn that engagement slightly to his favor, but at this point, he's under a triple cap. Um... And now Reekly taking advantage of several upgrades, the new specialized munitions, improvised armor. Zuka squad going to force off this black track. Yeah, it, it's not only a supply advantage for Reekly. I feel Farage is very limited in his ability to attack and, and take proficient engagement. So he's he's got to be very consolidated, whereas Reekly spread out all across the map and kind of leveraging his his uh, mobility and, and manpower advantage. Yeah, the easy eights are so quick. They can be anywhere on the map uh, as soon as they need to to counter any sort of push. And even with the Flak 36, uh, the easy eight's still far superior to the Stug. And now Reekly spreading out his armor. He'll be able to advance on any front that he wants. The Hellcat's going to win this fight against the Stug, especially with the Stug whiffing that first shot. Farage forced to move this flak around constantly to try and 
gain an advantage somewhere, but just overwhelmed by these assault engineers. Yeah. And that's it. All right, everyone. Welcome back. So, as usual, I'm just going to start with a recap of the build order. So, Reekly, playing as the Americans, locking in the armored battle group right away. Obviously, he starts with his scouts, and he goes straight into four assault engineers, which we are definitely going to talk about after this. Uh, into the M16 quad mount half track, then a bazooka squad, a sniper, a second bazooka squad, and then a Hellcat. He gets a, an HMG out, and then his two easy gates to lock up the game. Uh, on Farage's side, started out pretty vanilla DAC, eventually locked in Battlefield Espionage Battle Group, uh, the new battle group for DAC. Started with his Panzer Pioneers, then he got a Crod Schutzen out, and then two Panzer Grenadier squads, an Assault Grenadier squad, a Panzer Jaeger squad. Then he did the uh, the lightest infantry good shoots uh, with the half track, um, then the flak half track, and then a med truck, and then three pack 38s, two uh, with the half track uh, kind of support coming in, uh, and then finally the the Stug G assault package, and a flak 36 prior to the game ending. Um, so I already talked about it. I'm gonna kick it over to you, Chris. Four assault engineers to start the game in a wide 1v1 map. Your thoughts? Yeah, super interesting. Something that I was not expecting at all. Uh, but but something that I find very fascinating with Riki's play is he opened with those assault engineers, of course, going straight into the weapon support center. There's a lot of synergy between the M16s uh, with the re fast repair of the assault engineers, so he can maintain a lot of pressure uh, across the front line, as you guys saw in this game. He was everywhere on the map. Um, and also then adding in those bazooka squads from the weapon support center. So that tech really did come in uh, handy here. And of course, locking into the armored battle group just naturally by default, uh, it's all centered around that armor. So as you guys saw, he transitioned into those easy eights and the, the assault engineers had value all game. So uh, what I find really interesting about the assault engineers is the tempo. You know, I was, I kept saying in the game, I, I think he's going to lose some value as the game scales, but he just kept the pressure. And I think that was like a major theme. He had a lot of pressure, a lot of mobility, and Farage was constantly reacting instead of being proactive like he normally is. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning, like he used the assault engineers really well, like didn't commit them to fights that they couldn't win or didn't have an advantage. And so they were dropping models, but it clearly wasn't enough to really cost them any manpower. And like you pointed out during the cast, 23 manpower reinforcement still doesn't hurt that much on the USF side, especially with the armored battle group uh, getting the upgrades that allow you to reduce the manpower uh, and the pop cap cost of your vehicles on the back end uh, definitely doesn't hurt. I also think uh, even though he went for a really heavy anti-infantry build early, like the assault engineers don't obviously don't have any snares, but they do have mines. And uh, mine got the first crowd shoots in. Uh, he was laying mines all over the map. And even though uh, Farage did get you know a sweeper on his Panzer Pioneers, like. That's one squad to sweep mines when you have four squads that can lay them. Um, and so I think that's something else that just kind of constantly threw a wrench into Farage's plans, either cost him engagements uh, through early model drops uh, or force him to kind of slow down and avoid taking terrain the way he'd like to. Um, the other thing that we talked about uh, a little bit was how even though I think really did a good job of recognizing that Farage had a very infantry heavy build for the DAC, he was still prepared for the anti-vehicle play, right? Like he was waiting for the light vehicles to come out. And you, you pointed this out, right? He had the two bazooka squads. He got a Hellcat out first, which we were both like, why would you do that? But it makes sense if you're worried about uh, a P3 coming out, right? And your only counters are, are the Zook squads and some mines across the map. So really smart play uh, by Reekly there. Um, what else did you see? I, I, I mean, we talked about like Farage was also really impressive, even though he didn't pull this one out. Yeah, I would say what was really interesting, um, Farage came out, like you said, in, in the bottom left of the map, really aggressive. If you guys remember in the beginning of the game, he had those two P-Grands in that crowd shoots and really pushing that bottom left lane. And and uh, Shark said, Reekly was being very patient with his assault engineers. He wasn't engaging. That was not an engagement he could take and win. Uh, so he's being patient, waiting for that critical mass of four assault engineers. And that's when he really turned on the pressure. But Farage constantly switching from side to side, uh, doing a really good job of staying mobile and keeping his army consolidated. I think the LEIG or the ISG was a really 
peculiar play. It was a very low fuel play. Um, and I think what he what he wanted to do was really try and carve out the center of the map. Um, but I, I feel that that play in particular allowed Reekly to really keep up the manpower pressure and then and then go for the the Hellcat because I think he assumed that, that an LEIG straight into double pack guns meant that um, Farage was banking up fuel for a, a quick tech to Panzer Command maybe for P3s or even a really quick Tiger. Um, I think that might have been a read from Reekly, and he did a really good job of making sure that he, he wasn't too greedy um, and, and, and had an a anti-tank, you know, like the M16 uh, or M18, rather, the Hellcat uh, available. Um, now, Farage, what I think what I think he did a great job of in particular was his counterattacks. I thought they were very good. Uh, there were multiple points in the game where he retook the center and the in the top right side uh, with half the manpower, half the supply. Uh, I thought that was really impressive. Very, very good strategic and tactical thinking on the fly. But I feel like he was constantly outgunned by the Easy Eights and the Hellcats. He was losing a lot of the armored fights, uh, and he just wasn't able to to really win those head-on engagements. So um, very, very tough, very, very tough game for him. Yeah, and so I mean, you saw the unit preservation was excellent from both players, um, even at the end of the game, right? Farage still had all of his original infantry squads. He was just lacking the packs that he built. Um, but to your point, that was because he had to keep constantly back off in response to um, Reekly's map presence. Um, I, I think it, it's sharp. I think you're probably right that that Reekly read the situation with the ISG and thought, okay, yeah, this is a low fuel build probably going for some heavy armor, which helped him be prepared. You know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe instead of the ISG, ISG makes a lot of sense against uh, Brits who team to use, tend to use more team weapons than the Americans, especially in this, this sense. Um, but I think maybe a machine gun, even though I really despise the DAX MG34, I, I think it is not anywhere near as effective as I'd like it to be. Um, still, that little bit of suppression to kind of just zone out part of the map and keep those assault engineers from running rampant uh, could have been helpful. Um, the last thing I wanted to highlight from Reekly, and we talked about it, the sniper micro, really impressive. When you're microing like nine squads, and you have a sniper in the back that gets the double vet by the 20 minute mark, uh, especially when you build it at like the 12 minute mark, um, that's pretty awesome. And we don't see a lot of sniper play. At least I don't, I'm not at the level <laughs> in 1v1 where I see a lot of sniper play. Um, so pretty impressive, just game plan and execution from Reekly all the way around. Uh, anything else that that you know your viewers, my viewers can take away um, from watching these these titans of Co Three battle out? Yeah, I, I I think I just want to echo your last point um, on both sides. So on Reekly's side, as you said, you had the sniper, and a lot of his play was focused around that sniper. If you guys noticed, uh, he would use it to win engagements and then push through with the assault engineers. But he was always um, on the outskirts of the of the flak ling, which on the opposite side, Farage was centering his entire army around as well. That you know he didn't have an MG34 like you said, which I agree would have came in handy. Uh, and because he was so short manned on something like an MG34, he was really really utilizing the flak ling as that anchor, and he was his whole army was kind of centered around that. So um, I feel like it's just so impressive to see players with a wide array of different units. Uh, that are that each require their own micro um, to, to keep up the multitasking across the map and at the same time take take these engagements and take these fights at, at the level they do is just so impressive. But um, I, I just want to point out one thing um, that Farage did that was really brilliant when he when he took that factory across the top of the map and we we both assumed that that thing was toast. Toast, absolutely um, done. Yeah, it's so interesting to see how Farage, he, he, he took a, a calculated risk. Whether or not that flak for Ling died didn't matter because his goal was to retake the center of the map. So that flak for Ling surviving is a, is a major bonus. It's, of course, ideal. Uh, but what it did do, no matter what, is it repositioned the entire army of Reekly towards the north of the map, and that allowed Farage to dig into the center. He called in... He called in the Stugs. He was able to kind of reclaim that center of the map, which I didn't think he was going to be able to reclaim. And it was simply through one single unit, the maneuvering of one unit. He didn't even engage. 
Uh, so I just thought that was fascinating to see how he was already thinking ahead, three steps ahead, getting his his units in line. And I wish he took a better engagement with those Stugs. Um, losing that Stug really, I think, uh, really hampered his tempo from that point forward. But I just want to emphasize um, the multi-pronged thinking from Faraji there. Yeah, that's a, a really good point. And this is why you're better at this game than me, because I didn't even consider that. I was just impressed that he got... I was almost calling it Schrodinger's <laughs> flak track because I just assumed it was dead. So if he keeps it alive, then like, you know, hooray, <laughs> good for everybody. Um, no, that that's a great point. And and all of the effort that Reekly put into trying to kill that flak track and hunt it down vacated the center of the map. So um, I don't yeah. know how, like, I'm going to replicate that. This isn't like a, a simple op toss thing where I can, um, you know, easily replicate it on my own. That's something that that's like a one time play that you only see someone at this level make, uh, but still really impressive. And I'm glad you pointed it out. Um, yeah. Chris, thank you. Uh, great having you on. Um, really appreciate the time. Cause I, I know it's late here. It's gotta be late where you are. Um, yeah. Thanks. Look forward to, to doing this again. Thanks for having me, man. It was a blast. I really enjoyed this cast. It was really cool to see some off meta play and happy to, to join in again in the future. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you all in the next one.